Next up is a fellow uh, we've known for, for some time, Joel Lunenfeld, um, who ran a, a very uh, innovative agency called Moxie um, in Atlanta uh, and left that uh, uh, lofty position to go to this little startup called Twitter, um, where he's now the VP of Global Brand Strategy, and he's going to give us a case study of how marketing works or I think it might be three case studies of how marketing works on Twitter. So please join me in welcoming Joel to the CM Summit. Three years, two days, and a month to get to the first billion tweets on Twitter. And we do that now every two and a half days. So uh, it's staggering. These are billions of conversations happening on a weekly basis uh, between brands, between people, about the things they care about. Uh, Ron Conway and John actually talked a little bit about platforms growing organically and then figuring out an advertising strategy and how they're going to monetize. I think that's kind of the beauty of Twitter, which is the tweets um, are, the, are the messages. They are the promoted products, and they are the advertisements. And that's fundamentally different. And it's marketing to a whole new type of canvas. So when you think about the earliest days of media, the content and the advertising have always been separate messages. They've always been kind of it looked something like this, before, in, after, around the content, up to the right, to the side of the content. So what does that mean? Uh, basically, for advertisers and for marketers, the canvas that we are used to working with uh, has always been an interruption. Does it look familiar? Uh, that's fundamentally different. On Twitter, the conversation is the canvas. And when the conversation is the canvas, you could do some pretty amazing things. For example, you could tell stories in a way that could only unfold on a place like Twitter. So, quick show of hands, who here is a fan of NASCAR? Okay, we're in New York, I've got one, two, two confirmed. Okay, who here is a fan of Twitter? Okay, a few more hands, that's good. If you were on Twitter um, and you were watching the Daytona 500 a few weeks ago, you saw something pretty amazing unfold. Brad Kozlowski is driving around and all of a sudden an accident occurs on the track, a multi-car crash, and what does he do? Uh, like any safe driver, he decides to take his phone and he takes a picture. And he tweets that picture out, it was a first. And then a conversation started. People asking him, do you really have your phone in the car? And he writes back, maybe. Um, and then his sponsors jumped in, um, and then the broadcasting networks jumped in, and next thing you know, he grew from about 100,000 followers to about 300,000 followers in just a couple hours. So that's pretty amazing. But um, how does a brand work with a story like this? Well, if you're Tide and you're the uh, uh, bleach that's used to clean up gasoline on the track and you get a beautiful like, glamour shot like this, you can instantly put that up on Twitter and put it on your profile page and actually start a contest. You know, give us your favorite quote and we'll pin it here. So, a pretty amazing story that could only happen. And that's about uh, telling a story. It's also about broadcasting content. So most people don't think of Twitter as a broadcasting platform. And in, that, in essence, you know, news breaks on Twitter. Um, all the biggest news organizations in the world broadcast their content on Twitter. So if you're a brand like Porsche and you're about to launch the new 911, you're also going to use Twitter as a place to launch uh, your, your campaign and tell the world. So here's a quick video of what they launched uh, first on Twitter. That might be Ron Conway's garage. So um, the Porsche launched on Twitter, and they actually launched it on an enhanced profile page. So something really amazing happened. When the conversation is the canvas, all of a sudden, what was just a video erupts a conversation. Hundreds of people commenting about the heritage of Porsche, what it means to them, the value of Porsche, how they always wanted to own a Porsche. And we drove over 50% engagement on, an, on, on a message like that. So that's, that's you know, more than most advertisers could ever ask for. Twitter also has its roots from the beginning with uh, brands and consumers talking to each other, not at each other. And uh, you see that every day play out with the most innovative companies like JetBlue who use Twitter as an amazing customer service tool to reach directly out to their, to their customers. Twitter's other unique aspect is surrounding big events, cultural events. Uh, you know, this event right now, hashtag CM Summit, 
Well, when events happen in the world, they happen digitally on Twitter. So think about the Super Bowl this year. It was pretty amazing. Uh, in 2008, there were 27 tweets per second, TPS reports is, is what we call them at Twitter, and that was the record. In 2011, it was 4,000 tweets per second, and due to the velocity and growth of the platform, in 2012, it was over 12,000 tweets per second. So this is just a massive amount of conversation that's unfolding. So in response, advertisers are listening, and they're using the hashtag to continue the conversation. You know, we like to think of a hashtag as a campfire that people gather around. And last year, uh, only one commercial had a hashtag. This year, one in five had a hashtag. So, um, you know, one commercial in particular that was actually the most talked about one of the Super Bowl, I can't figure out why, is the David Beckham one. Everyone's paying attention now. Um, so they put this hashtag out there, Beckham for H&M. And, you know, it was a commercial of Beckham in their new line of men's underwear. And uh, the conversation just erupted. And here in New York, actually, uh, first, Nancy Jones was the only person in America that didn't realize that there was a commercial with David Beckham in his underwear. So she tweeted this out. And when brands and consumers are in the same canvas, um, if you're H&M, you could actually tweet back and say, don't worry, Nancy, we've got you covered, and then play the commercial for her one more time. And much like the disappointment when I clicked forward um, in New York, the billboard came down. And the billboard coming down is typically when a campaign's over. You know, an advertisement is something that starts, stops, and finishes. If you create an ad, it'll stop. Uh, if you create a conversation, it'll go on. So in the case of H&M, they actually use this hashtag, Beckham for H&M, to continue into a Valentine's Day promotion and really kind of stoke that flame of that hashtag for quite some time, extending the reach and the frequency of the very expensive television uh, spot that they bought during the Super Bowl. Finally, Twitter is also used as a canvas for driving transactions. So people talk about um, themselves, they talk about what they buy, and they talk about it at scale on Twitter. So um, Amex actually took advantage of this in a very interesting way, and they created a program called Sync, and here's a really quick video of how it works. Every day you tweet about the things you love, but what if those tweets could be more than just tweets? Now, when you sync your eligible American Express card with Twitter, tweets about the things you love can save you money on the things you love. So, very innovative. Once you sync your card um, with Twitter and American Express, simply tweeting out a hashtag can give you a coupon that you can redeem without any friction. So, uh, a great example is one that happened just the other day. Um, tweet Amex Pro Flowers and get 20% 20 off on your next online purchase. So, you can see Joseph on the bottom there tweeted, I'd love to get my mom flowers tomorrow, hashtag Amex Pro Flowers. This actually sparked um, something for me, remembering that I need to get flowers for my wife, um, who is actually a first, a new mother. And if you say that social advertising can't cause an emotional engagement, I beg to differ. Um, she was definitely, Fiona was very emotionally engaged and her mother was very happy. And again, this all happened through a conversation on the platform. So I'm going to end with two stories, one from uh, the consumer side, one from a brand side, of how anyone can spark a conversation on Twitter. The first is Kevin Durant. So during the, during the NBA lockout, he tweets, anyone playing football in Oklahoma City, I need to run around or something. So George tweets back, I got a game tonight in Stillwater, I need a deep threat. He goes, I can play. But then he was questioned, very, very, uh, can you catch? Uh, we've won for the last three years. In other words, don't screw it up. And he writes, for real? Yes. So, one of these only on Twitter moments, and then it actually happened. <laughs> so, they won again, so it's four years in a row now. Pretty unfair advantage. But it all started with a tweet. So can a brand do something like this? You know, the best brands in the world are listening on Twitter, and they're listening to what people are saying. So in the case of Audi, it all started with a tweet. Somebody wrote, have, you tol have I told you, Audi, that I want an R8 today? Oh my god, this is getting so pretty. I'm Mark. Hi, Mark. I'm Hi. Joanna. And this is your R8 for a day. Thank you. <laughs> oh my you want to hop right in? Amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> and you, you don't realize you're, you're, you've got your foot on the accelerator wanting to go faster. 
So it started with a tweet. I think the best marketers uh, since the dawn of time have tried to launch campaigns that would spark a conversation. I mean, I'd argue we're, we're in a new era now where a conversation could actually spark a campaign. So um, when the conversation is the canvas, you can do some pretty amazing things. And with that, uh, thank you. <laughs>